Everyone sucks. Bye. 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 Iman and Brooke joining me. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I'm going to leave their Instagram names here for you guys and you should definitely follow them. So today we're going to be talking about the struggles of being a blogger, of an influencer, and basically the things that you don't see online. I was on YouTube a few nights ago and was searching this topic and didn't really find a lot of videos, especially from smaller influencers like us. Mm -hmm. It was more so just like the really, really big influencers and I also didn't see anyone in Canada talking on the subject. Mm -hmm. So today we are going to answer some questions that we threw up on Instagram, just basically outlining the struggles or any questions that aren't um, highlighting the highlights of being a blogger. So let's get to it. Okay. I guess first of all, I just like to say that we all love vlogging. This isn't us like trying yeah, to complain. Yeah. Like let's let, let's make that clear. And like but extremely was, grateful for like how far we've gotten yeah. and like everything that's been that we work for. Like and that the opportunities we have is a job for people now. Like that is so crazy. Like yeah. for it yeah. to be within the last like maybe years. like five years it's like really boomed and the fact that we're able to be a part of it is so yeah, cool. Exactly. And, like, Nothing totally. but positive things. Just kidding. Yes. Some negatives. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's just like, like and with any yeah. industry though, there are some negatives and I just don't think there's information out there for people who are wanting to start a career as a blogger and yeah. as an influencer because everything online is like, oh, it's this like crazy desirable job and yeah. everyone thinks it's like so glamorous and so awesome and you get all these free things, but there are quite a few catches that aren't yeah like on the internet or yeah. available to people. So. It's things you would literally only learn throughout doing it. Like yeah, exactly. actually experiencing it in person. So let's get to the nitty gritty. Yes. So we're gonna answer the, first of all the questions. I didn't have a lot, but we'll answer these and then just kind of touch on some points that we wanted to share with you guys. So the first question is, how do you deal with burnout? Assuming that means like, how do you not get exhausted? I think because your life is so mm -hmm. online and you have to be so on all the time. I don't know. How do you guys deal with burnout? I mean, I feel like I burn out all the time. Like, I don't. <laughs> I just like, took a month break. break. Yeah, like, I literally I just took a month break off Instagram. Yeah, but. it's like inevitable. I feel like whatever career you're in, you're gonna burn out at some point. Or, I mean, I don't even know. Like, but, I, yeah, I don't even. I think like this. I'm again. I'm spinning it as a positive here, but it's kind of cool that this is an industry that you can take a step back from. Like you can have an opportunity to pull yourself back if, yeah. it, if it be a day to unplug. Yeah. Even if you have to get on your story and be like, I'm leaving. hey everyone, I'm taking a social, or a social media break for 24 hours or something like that. Yeah. Um, and I think it's so necessary. So I think that's how I deal with it. I'm not Me necessarily too. someone who does tell people when I do it I know I'm at that point I'm, <laughs> I'm just like that. see ya yeah. I'm out like but, off the grid yeah. I'm literally yeah whereas like if you're if you have an office job and you're burnt out you can't just be like hey guys not I'm gonna come in yeah. <laughs> like, I know it's and of true. course there's repercussions to that and yeah. there is like your engagement goes down blah 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 but like if you need it you need it, you need it. and it's I think so... people are really understanding to it as well I've done it a few times and was just like guys I need time off Mm -hmm. I had surgery and fully took no campaigns for an entire month, which means I didn't get paid. <laughs> yeah, that's but I needed that. it, so I needed to mend, I needed to yeah. heal, and that's one of the like perks of this industry is you can take a break whenever you want. Like your job's always yeah. gonna be there. But there's but not gonna be a vacation pay or no. payout or no. any. There's benefits. no one helping you back up benefits. Afterwards. Yeah, exactly. So like yeah. those types right. of things you really need to take into account when you're thinking about doing this career full time because unexpected. Burnout doesn't have your back. Exactly. No. Yeah. It doesn't have your back and 
and no one no. else does either. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so to answer that question, I think we all answered that we don't really deal with burnouts very well. Yeah. We just leave. <laughs> okay. Um, did you ever make money while running your Insta part-time or did you just dive right in? You guys answer first. That's, we kind of talked about this earlier yeah, when we you were did. first reading we the questions, but I, that's why I started full-time. It's because I started making money part-time and then that's, I think yeah. that's when you should think about it. Um, really make sure you have like a consistent or semi-consistent paychecks coming in before you think about doing this full-time mm -hmm. because it's in some ways even seasonal like there'll be times of, of the year where you won't get a paycheck for you know like a you, month exactly and then yeah. you'll get a uh, ten of them in one month like it's so Christmas times booming exactly like Spring it's so times inconsistent booming. so you really for one thing I recommend to save like save your definitely money <laughs> save and I know it's if you love to like invest and buy clothes and like you know style them and everything but oh. just save your money <laughs> Please save your money because yeah, you don't know yeah. when the next one's coming. Exactly, and you're no. gonna want to travel and stuff like, like you know, like just there's so many opportunities with blogging that I feel like wasting it on like silly things, silly things isn't worth it, especially when you're just starting out. It looked like when we were just starting out, like it was just little paychecks here and there, like it wasn't a, you couldn't live off that. So no, no. definitely no. something to take into consideration. When yeah, I guess that. like yeah. you and I both aren't full time with blogging, but that is definitely a reason why I decided to take a chance and yeah. take it a lot more seriously was because I was starting to make some money off it. And I got to a point I used to work for like a fashion company, I did marketing, and I got home from a one week vacation to visit my family in Ontario and I had like eight boxes of stuff from brands. This was when I was doing it just on the side, like kind of for fun. And I was like, holy crap, I don't have time to do this. Mm -hmm. Like I'm letting these brands down, I'm letting mm -hmm. my boss down, I'm letting everyone down because I was kind of putting 50% of my effort into this and 50% into my job Yeah. and I wasn't doing 100% either. So I decided, I was like, okay, this is what I love. It's a new industry, it's booming, there's money in it. Like the influencer marketing industry has like absolutely blown out of the water like the last Crazy. couple years. Yeah. But that's a reason definitely why I went to take it totally, on more seriously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, I've sure. been part time this whole time, and I, I like, I have a full time job, and then I do yeah, it part time. And at, at real estate sister, <laughs> yeah, go check her well, out right here. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, the the definitely the only thing that I can really add to this because I've never had that transition to full time, and nor will I, um, because I'm very passionate about my full time job. But when I saw my first paycheck was when I was studying for my licensing and I was I had the time to like fully immerse myself in like the like passionate side towards fashion and like really get creative and like really not just like not just going through the motions of it which I was kind of doing before yeah and then that's when I all of a sudden saw a change and then I got like five paid jobs in like one month and I was like holy smoke holy smokes then of course like, oh, then right. I got licensed yeah. and then I and then I yeah. didn't have as much time so I have kind of taken gone back a little bit whereas most people that would have been their like hit the ground running moment. Yeah. But it just for me it's that's not how my that's not my road. Um but I definitely can say that once you do, I think, start getting those paychecks coming in and start building that portfolio of paid work, that's when you should start thinking about doing it full time. It kind of like not puts a fire under your head. Yeah, you're like, ooh, yeah. I can make yeah. this into a job. Like, this could be a real yeah. thing, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah. When it, like, for all three of us, it started off as a hobby, for yeah. sure. Like, yeah. we yeah. all were just, we loved fashion and wanted a place like a to create like, a outlet. Exactly. And then we were like slow like Which you it said. can and it still is yeah. for all of yeah, us. Yeah, exactly. Even for you. Like it's just a little extra yeah. side cash. I like yeah. I label Girls got a wedding to pay for yeah. you yeah. know. It's the hustle. <laughs> okay, um this one's interesting. Is there a competitive vibe with other bloggers? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I feel like it's with any industry. In it's any industry, right? you can't. Yeah, even, it is. I think not. I wouldn't say like within our like friends. Thank no, God. No, thank God. Like I don't. 
would never feel any competitive nature or anything between yeah. us three. You always have to go back to the fact that this is like a personal brand. Yeah. But exactly. There so isn't what? another Lux Violin. There exactly. isn't another Iman. There's not another Brooke. Like, there just isn't. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you always need to remember that. But I would say a lot of girls get really competitive about numbers is a big one. Yeah. Like, I think when people are kind of at the same following, people start getting like, oh, like, she's 200 above me. Yeah. Or, why is oh, she why, growing Why faster? is she growing? And yeah. why yeah. am people I not? People like to jump like, to assumptions. Yeah. And yeah, I, I mean, I don't want to yeah. be like the negative Nancy here because I have met some of the best people from blogging. Like, that's my favorite thing, and that's why I still, <laughs> that's why I still do it. It's because you meet yeah. like these amazing people that you would yeah. never have crossed paths with in a million yeah. years. Um, but again, this video is about like real life of the blogging. Reality. Like, yeah. there are. It, for 10 people in a room that are absolutely phenomenal, there's gonna be one that might bring the vibe down. Yeah. And might. And such yeah. a nice way of saying Yeah. It. Yeah. <laughs> like, but also, it's. <laughs> like, it's like, it's like, <laughs> it is like, it is a narcissistic industry. <laughs> So there's it's gonna be a lot of big. There's gonna be a lot I of mean, like it's literally an industry about yourself. Yeah. So I mean, like it sounds so. <laughs> yes. No, but like there's narcissistic. but there's a really big difference about a blogger who's doing it out of passion. Yeah. And a blogger who's doing out of doing it for the fame. Yeah. Which is not our vibe. Like. Yeah. Like as long as I can support myself and do what I love, I don't care. Money's great. Yes. But yeah. like I just want to like my life. I like my life. So Same. that's at the end of the day, that's all that matters. It's kind of like I'm like, okay, this is because I really don't want to be a negative about this <laughs> because I love it. Like everyone, everyone so much. sucks. But like, <laughs> no, it's, it's like say for instance, if you were to ask a group of like In pop office, artists, like yeah. Are you, is there a competitive vibe? And they were like, no, we all love each other. And anyone, so we all love each other. And anyone it's who amazing. says they're not it's is like, a huge no, liar. No, you, okay? still, have, you yeah. still have top charts for yes. a reason. Yeah. Yeah. You're still competing against each other for like yeah. billboard music. Who got the red carpet moment? Blah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. exactly. So anyone who says that there's not a competitive nature to our business is lying. Yes. Yeah. And, and side like, note, like, and not in a negative way. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, you, it's it's exactly it. Like, yeah. everyone's gonna have their moment. Everyone has like a really good post here and there. As long as you're like yeah. being supportive and being like, oh my god, babe, like great, like great job on that yeah. post. Like, I love that shoot. I love this outfit. Like. I think there is, especially in this era of women, like people are very supportive. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. So I would say 90%, like it's very good. And yeah. like every now and then you get someone who kind of rubs you the wrong way or whatever. Exactly. But, yeah. It's like the 10 to 1 exactly. ratio. Yeah. All, you, all yeah. I have to say is like what you put out there will come back to you. So if you're going to go out and, you know, be supportive of everyone, hopefully it'll just come back to you. Like and just that. don't like, get caught up in that one person. Exactly. They, move on. It's not worth it's, it. Not worth it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's they're transparent enough. You'll, exactly. You'll know. Just not. You'll know. Did you meet other bloggers well into your career early on? Do you want to go first? Yeah. Okay, I'll go first. <laughs> I've I've been meeting bloggers since I started. I too. I did start my blog as a school project. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my graduating class have done like small, big blogs along the way. So I know bloggers through that. When I kind of started taking it more seriously. We go to events, so I would say throughout the entire time I've met many, but I would say more recently I've become, I've like found my like core people. Yeah. So I would say probably like well into, or my like closest friends in blogging. I would say the same thing. Yeah. yeah. I've met oh, I've been like the last six months I've met everyone. Like it's yeah, like yeah. I was like, was I excommunicated from the blogging community of Vancouver? Because like all of a sudden, I was like, whoa, there's so many people. Yeah. But yeah. it was like I was the only one not invited. <laughs> <laughs> and then now I'm invited. So I'm like, oh Ooh, I'm in. God, I'm, I'm in. in. <laughs> I like didn't know I you were alive. Like yeah. Oh so for me, a little later on. Um, I was on the not invited list. <laughs> well, you're in now, For girl. obvious reasons. You're in now. Yeah. So there's a couple other questions, but they're not necessarily related on like the topic of today's video. So we kind of just had a couple points we also wanted to share that weren't questions asked, but just information we think is definitely something you should consider before mm -hmm. trying to pursue a career in blogging or as an influencer. 
So one of the ones that I said is that you can't be discouraged in the fact that you have to constantly vouch for yourself. Mm -hmm. In the influencer marketing world, like a PR company is given a budget from a brand and that budget goes to them, which they then like pitch bloggers. So they pitch us, but they are always gonna lowball you because the less money that we get, the more they get. So that PR company is obviously gonna want the most money that they can get, but it is very discouraging when you're always told that you're worth less than you are. So you always, always have to vouch for yourself and you always have to tell people you're worth more. So that's a very discouraging aspect of the industry that like it does get to mm -hmm. me sometimes. It feels like pulling teeth sometimes. It does. To you get have to like pull a... teeth and you're like, I'm not gonna like my interning days are over. Yeah. yeah. My interning days are over. I don't work for free. I've interned disgusting. Disgusting. Like yeah. disgusting fashion, amount like, of hours. Interns, just like yeah. years. Well, like honestly done years. Done working for free. I'm done working for and free. It's like, the thing is if they were just like when you put it in the way that before influencer marketing, how much money was your budget for print marketing mm -hmm. and ads? And it was probably in the sixty to one hundred thousand dollar range. If Honestly, not more, if not more, right? minimum. Like yeah. that starting rate. Like if you think so, of a commercial, like all of the film exactly. crew, the location permits, the actors, the post. It's costing the them wardrobe, way more like than everything. what they would pay you. And so, especially when you're just starting out, it's gonna sound amazing when you get a paycheck and everything like that, but. Like you said, just know they are lowballing you most of the yeah. time. They are always lowballing you. And it's, yeah, it, you're, you're worth more. Let's just see. Oh, it's recording. It's recording. Okay. Yeah. So I think it's just because it was like a 20 minute yeah. clip. Okay. <laughs> Where did we leave off though? Um, we were oh, talking about. Should so, we just. Worth. Oh, what was I going to say? It was. I forget. I forgot. About like okay. saying no to... So basically the camera just cut itself, but we're gonna continue on with on that note that you should definitely always vouch for yourself, never let people tell you you're mm -hmm. worth less, and it is such a desirable industry and so many people want to do this, so they're willing, it, willing to do it for free, but you're only hurting yourself by not asking for money or asking for mm -hmm. more money. Yeah. Um, oh, I remember what I was gonna say. Okay, let's hear it. Sorry. Guys. <laughs> well, I literally sat here like, what was I gonna say? It's on what? the tip of my tongue. Okay, <laughs> this is something that I found really helpful that I think is really important for anyone who's starting blogging is to not be afraid to talk about what type of money you're making with other bloggers that you trust. Yes. Maybe unpopular Key opinion, trust. but you are oh, going, yeah. the only sources that you have are your peers. There's no like minimum wage or, or law that yeah. protects bloggers on like, oh, if you do one post, it's this amount of money. Yeah. Maybe like, there's like those strictly. calculators online yeah. that you can do for your engagement and your numbers and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But I do think it is quite important, especially when you think you're at that point or when a company is offering you money and you just don't know what what you should be getting yeah go about it in a polite way like there's a way to go about it yeah and there's the people and the time and the place that you should do it but i think it's important to communicate that Absolutely. with one another yeah I because like, we're I've the been only so people shocked. that we have it's true it's, i've been yeah. so shocked at like what people have charged, not charged. I've sat down with bloggers who like had triple my following. And she was like, oh, I see you work with like this brand. And I was like, yeah. And she's like, oh, she had a, she had an agency. She had like, she was working with an agency. She's she like, oh, I can't get them to pay me. And I was like, Duh. yeah, <laughs> what? Yeah. I was like, what do you mean you can't get them to pay you? I myself had a lot of like good experience in my previous job doing stuff like this. And I'm not afraid to just like flat out be like, sorry, I'm not interested in working for free mm -hmm. or like these are my rates. Yeah. Firmly. I'm not negotiating. Yeah. Like that's that, take it or leave it. I'm gonna move on to the next brand. And if once you, you can if you can't rates. accept it. Definitely. Um, we also said that surprisingly, I think a lot of people have this like idea that bloggers are always at events and they always look fabulous and like we have this like crazy lifestyle, but and so I was social. We're so social. We have so many friends, but 
like I would say like 80% of my week is like at home looking like a bum with no makeup on. If you watch my vlogs, you see that. Um, you spend yeah. a lot of time alone and it can be kind of lonely. It's a little bit weird. Like you're a freelancer, you're by yourself, you're behind a computer. Sometimes the only person you talk to is your Starbucks barista. Yeah. You gotta make friends yeah. somehow. That's yeah. why I think it's so important like, too, to like leave. vibe with other or like collaborate and just like engulf yourself with other people that are in that creative aspect or in that sort of industry yeah. in that way like you're like i'm not alone like i can talk about things mm -hmm. i can like you know we have similar interests we have similar issues all the time so it's just kind of like nice to have someone who understands it because like when i was starting out i didn't know anyone who was blogging yeah. so i would just kind of go off of whatever like i was yeah. like okay well i guess this is it like i don't really know what else i'm supposed to do so it was yeah it's good, it's to, have good to have people around peeps. you um another one is staying true to who you are i think that's a really big one mm -hmm. because when you're online all the time and you're sharing your life online and you're always on instagram you're seeing other people's outfits other people's lives this that i think you need to think back to your life which this is actually kind of now that i'm saying out loud kind of scary for like the younger generation yeah because i feel like you have to look back on your life before instagram i've always been super girly i've always like had a love for menswear like i think i've had i've had a couple like outfits definitely where i was like what that doesn't yeah. make any sense why are you wearing that oh but all the time. i now have a really good sense of self and sense of like i know who i am but it's hard to like not compare yourself to everyone else on instagram so i think yeah. it's really really important to like stay true to who you are online and offline comparing like, yourself dress to like yourself will only like, do wrong exactly it'll only do wrong like just only don't do you wrong like you shouldn't people. be dressing like someone posing like someone taking photos in a certain spot because someone else did like you need to really like have it's a creative outlet like yeah. vlogging like you need to go about your life like you normally would like yeah. but you're showcasing brands and everything in a way yeah. that you want to not the way someone else did or yeah, yeah. and that's something Just i fall into like when like i still deal with this all the time like sometimes i'll come home from a shoot and i'll be like i'll look at the photos and i'm like when would i ever actually go for like lunch and not like yeah. it's like I look like I'm playing dress up. Like, how does that align? And the times when I fall into that is when I lose inspiration. Totally. And mm -hmm. and I'm in a rut and I'm trying to get myself out of a rut by external sources and not by like checking in with like who I am or like what actually draws attention to me or what I, what type of style I'm attracted to. Um, yeah, that's always when I yeah. when I go off. Yeah. And then luckily I think I have enough awareness where I'm like, whoa, not me. But I still yeah. deal with it all the time. Same. Yeah, me too. Especially as as when you're you getting free it. clothes. Too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like you have a you have a company saying, Hey, I wanna pay you to wear this and you're like, Well, I need money. And yeah. let's see how I can work this. Like let me let me like let yeah. me try yeah. and style this so it yeah. looks like me. But when you have people coming at you saying like I want you I want to pay you to wear this you want to say yes, but you're also, you have to take a step back and be like, is this me? Yeah, like, like we said again, like, like yeah. don't, you don't have to yeah. accept everything. Don't like, compromise yourself for money or for the sake yeah. of being cool on Instagram. Mm -hmm. This video is getting long, so this is gonna be the last one, mm -hmm. but I think this is one that's really important, especially for anyone who's like younger, maybe just out of school, whatever, um, is that you are constantly chasing compensation as a blogger. Blogging's not like a job where you get paid every two weeks. Mm -hmm. I think we've all had instances where you signed a contract with a brand and it said that they'd pay you in two months, but it ended up being six months later or it ended up not happening. Like, yeah. you very much do get ghosted by collaborations. I was just telling him on about this today. Like, I had a really great brand come forward and offer me this contract, this and that and they just stopped answering my emails like completely like it happens uh, maybe they change their mind maybe they are going bankrupt you really have no idea yeah but in this job you need to be super financially responsible you, you maybe need like a side gig you need to be like very aware that like 
it's not a normal job where you it's very like secure like you definitely are after people to get paid definitely. and you're definitely yeah. you have to be very financially responsible and, to be a blogger and read your contracts too so that yeah. you know what you're getting yourself into mm -hmm. because i remember on my first couple paid collabs um i didn't read the contracts like mm -hmm. from start to finish and i was just like ah, money for this yeah. like <laughs> sure sign yeah. on the dotted line done yeah and um the nature of the contract was that i basically was the last person to get paid in the entire camp like campaign like not like really? me in bloggers but like the um agency wouldn't pay the bloggers until the company uh, paid the agency which the wasn't until oh, yeah the God. client paid the agency which yeah, wasn't until the too. very end of the campaign so i ended up getting paid i think it was over a year later i have paychecks that first, i still yeah. haven't been paid oh no six like months ago four we've, months ago like i, I know the two of us have nearly like uh, like what are you gonna do i can't sue a huge company yeah for and they the me. thing is the thing like that's it's gonna is they more. know that too they yeah. know that so in the back of their heads like they know you're not gonna Yo, you can like even yeah. threaten all take legal action. They know you're not going to because they're we'd lose exactly. Yeah. And so sadly, and yeah. there's probably a clause somewhere. Exactly, in there. like you don't know. You're, it's you against the company. Yeah. So and yeah. you're on your own. So you kind of have to pick your battles, but be very forward when you you do deserve compensation and they shouldn't be like jipping you off like that yeah but absolutely it happens Especially, i'm still waiting for and paychecks all through email so via yeah. text any any kind of business transaction you make with a yeah. brand is through text so there's always a way to track back to it but again it's just going back like they're bigger than you unfortunately like it would be nice to sue every company that hasn't paid me but like yeah you can't yeah so it's just going back to being super be fun super oh wouldn't it <laughs> i know um it would be super great if everyone stuck to their word but not everyone on the planet are great humans so move along just never work with them again and if people ask you how it was working with that brand you kindly tell them don't yeah, do it don't do it just don't do it. So I always say like, if you're running a business and you have employees, you're never gonna not pay your employees. So why would you not pay mm -hmm. someone who's done a campaign or a job for you? It's yeah. like someone working in a coffee shop and they're man like never getting a paycheck. So yeah. it's no different. We're still a business, but we're privately run. We're freelance, but we're still running a business. So we deserve to be paid comp proper compensation. Exactly. And it is uh, like, after you've signed that contract, like it is illegal on their part to not pay you. Mm -hmm. Like that is illegal, but it's just such a battle to be, it's like we said earlier, mm -hmm. pulling teeth sometimes to even get compensation. So totally another thing to keep in mind. Yes, but I think that's gonna wrap up our video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions, definitely comment in the comments below. And if you wanna see more videos with Iman and Brooke, please let me know and we'll see you guys next time. <laughs> And if you Bye. don't want to see us again, don't let us know. <laughs> don't tell us. Bye. Bye.